Get the whole story. All right, welcome back. You're watching Inside Politics. Just after uh, that short break, the fast commercial break, we continue with the discussions right here on the round table. But before we get to engage with my panelists, let's cross over to an interview that was recorded earlier this week on Thursday, a conversation with the chair of the JLA committee in the National Assembly, George Murugara, speaking about the progress around the NADCO report and what we can expect within the time frame of 45 days or less. Let's listen in. Well, thank you very much. We're now joined by the chairperson of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee of the National Assembly, George Murugara, who is also the member of parliament for Taraka, to give us some of the details about the National Dialogue Committee report that is currently in their docket. And uh, we just want to know the update so far. Thank you so much, Chair, for your time. Thank you. What is the latest? Because you were given 45 days, you're yeah. now down about 40 days. What's yeah. the latest? Yeah, the latest is that we were supposed to have a second meeting yesterday morning. And unfortunately, the Senate was not able to attend because they have the impeachment motion that is going on in that house. And being a very crucial motion, then they sought excuse from us and they said we would actually uh, have to adjourn this to the next date. Uh, Justice and Legal Affairs met and we agreed cons um, by consent to adjourn the matter to Wednesday next week. So next, next, day, we're, next week is going to be the second day of the meeting of the Joint Committee between JLAC of National Assembly and JLAC of uh, the Senate. Okay. And so far, what are the contentious issues that you have noticed in this report, Chairman? Uh, we have not gone through the report in detail because we were actually doing the preliminaries. We were doing exactly how our paperwork is going to be, uh, when to hold joint meetings, and uh, also try to come up with the agenda for each of the meetings. Uh, there are legislative proposals that were made by NANCO. They proposed eight key laws, out of which four of them have been published. Then if the other four, we have to look at them before publication. Um, there may be one or two issues that are in contention, but we may not be able to isolate that now until we have had proper meetings and we have discussed what is on the table. Okay. Uh, were they eight or nine? Uh, I thought, I'm aware of eight that were proposed. I'm aware four have been published. There may be a ninth one coming out of what we are going to be working on, but they have not yet made a constitutional uh, proposals, constitutional bills. Those ones were left to us. The drafts they have, we will have to look at them. Um, those are not uh, proposals yet, but we will be looking at what they have, what they've placed on the table in the form of a summarized version of the NADCO report, which is bulky. Okay, okay. And uh, the uh, Azimio side was saying that we should not amend this thing. It should be published or uh, put into law the way it was without any amendments. Is that something that you're also supporting? And unfortunately, as a JLAC, we will have to look at what is in our mandate. A NADCO committee may not have the mandate to propose bills. And they may propose bills, but we have to look at them afresh. We, as a committee of parliament, and especially now joint committee, we will have to look at the legality of the bills. Some of the bills have to conform to the constitution where they are proposing to amend existing acts of parliament. They must conform to the constitution. They must conform to our policy. They must also conform to the other laws that exist. As regards the constitution, we also have to look at whether what is being proposed is constitutionally viable. Can the constitution accommodate such amendments in any of the articles? Okay. We have to look at this. So it, it, they cannot have their way that it just passes the way it no, is? No, it cannot pass the way it is because if it cannot conform to the format of the constitution, it may have a problem. Uh, if it does conform, we have no reason to not to agree, not to approve. It's, it's a consideration. I remember also, Parliament is going to consider these bills uh, within its mandate. It's not going to be rubber stamping. It's going to be to look at it as the bills are presented and whether these conform 
to our legality, our principles of legality. Okay. And something that Kenyans are asking, will we go to the plebiscite? Will you be going to the referendum now that we have this proposal? Uh, number one, we are not sure which portions of the amendments require plebiscite, referendum. We will have to look at this. The, what I know for sure is there's some areas that are going to be parliamentary. Parliament, by sessions in the house, in the two houses, can amend the constitution that way. There are other areas which we must go to the referendum. We will be isolating what is for parliament to pass and what should go to the referendum. And referendum is referendum. It just has to be done. Which, which, which are these areas that require referendum? We have not yet identified which areas require referendum. We have not identified which areas require parliamentary uh, approach. But um, we are going to be doing this and we'll be discussing it with you. It may be too early now to try and summarize this, but I know for sure because I have read some of the recommendations. Okay. Some for in between parliament, others go to referendum. But normally, generally, as a legal mind and as a chairperson, which are the areas that normally, not uh, disregarding this bill, must go to the referendum? Areas that touch on changes to the structure of the government, that may require referendum. Um, like bringing areas, in the prime minister? Areas that we will have to look at the prime minister because, per se, the prime minister appears to be a cabinet secretary. If we don't give it other names and other functions away from what is contemplated under the executive uh, section of the constitution. But if we are going beyond that, giving him more powers that are not contemplated, that may be a change to the structure of the government and may require a referendum. But again, I cannot comment on this until I look at the bills. Uh, when it comes to also structure of parliament, if there are any changes that affect the structure of parliament, those may have to go to a referendum. Again, I may not be able to isolate this now. We have to look at the whole uh, report and the proposals that are made awesome entirely. Okay. And there's something that also came up uh, apart from this report that you're recommending 22 CAS positions. Is that the latest? What is the latest about that? The latest is that um, there may be changes to that because we have created the offices of CASs to be offices in the public service. It means these are offices to be created by the president or to be created by the public service commission through a law. If we do this, there may be no need of capping because we will leave it to the law to operate the way it is. They don't have to be capped because we don't even have to go 22. We may have 10, we may have 15. And when it comes to 22, we know very well there are state departments that require more than one CASs. This is why we have left it open so that gradually it is upon the exercise of discretion by His Excellency the President to determine the numbers he needs from time to time. So the capping may actually not be there when the bill is discussed and when it goes to the third reading in the House. Okay. So which stage is the bill now? The bill is coming up for second reading, which is debate in the House. It is slotted for this afternoon. And this afternoon, we hope we will have sufficient time to debate. If we can finish it today, the better. If we don't, we move on to next week. And then after that, it goes to the third reading, which is the committee of the whole House. This is where we implement amendments. Okay, okay. And maybe, so you have not put it at 22, you've just said at least we what? Are, what we have done is uh, initially we were contemplating capping it at 22. But on reconsideration and on hearing interested parties and stakeholders, we actually felt what we had done by creating that office. It's an office in the public service. There would be no need whatsoever. Um, remember, they are not coming to parliament for approval. They are not engaging parliament in any way. They are civil servants. So we have agreed we remove the capping. Yeah. And what will be the duties and the roles of these CSS? Uh, principally, it is to assist um, ministers, cabinet secretaries, and duties that they are going to be assigned from time to time, both by the president and by the cabinet secretaries. Um, it's purely to assist, all right? It, it is not anything else. To assist the ministers, to attend meetings on their behalf, to do certain mandates on their behalf. But we have said the role given by the law for them to come into parliament, CSEs cannot do that.
All right. Thank you so much, Chairman. Yes, Asante sana. Asante sana. Thank you, thank you. Well, thank you very much. That has been the chairperson of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, uh, George Murugara, giving us some of the in input about uh, the lawmaking process in the NADCO and other issues in that uh, committee that is very crucial at this point. Thank you so much. Over to you, Jesse. Well, To, thanks for putting the chair of JLAC at the National Assembly to task. Of course, he was a little bit slippery on some issues, but it's proper to have his voice as a voice of authority in terms of the progress made so far. So let me start with you, Okango. Yes, yes. A lot has been mentioned, but reflecting on what the chair has said mm -hmm. and what Azimio lieutenants have equally mentioned in terms of not pending their signature to that bill we've had of Azimio leader Raila Odinga saying it should pass as is because mm -hmm. he's skeptical of some people with other uh, they might not mean well for the report as is what's your well, thank you yeah. Jesse. first of all let me start from what we call the framework agreement remember this NADCO report is a negotiated document is a negotiated document that went through extensive public participation and the people were invited. There were over 42 meetings, over 700 written submissions from the public, over 240 appearances of stakeholders, experts, and therefore it was enriched by the people's views other than the committee from the Kenya Kwanzaa and Azimio. Mm -hmm. Number two, I have listened to Jay Lak Chair. Remember Jay Lak Chair, Horrible Murungara with all due respect, failed in the first instance of bipartisan talk. He is the reason why the first bipartisan failed, because he was not available for meeting and he could make, make excuses as alleged or as seen and uh, communicated by our then co-chair uh, Otiende Amolo. Now, this report has got critical deadlines. The first one is within 21 days. <coughs> Remember the report has been adopted by the bicameral house. So the framework agreement says that upon adoption, within 21 days, the two parties shall mm. nominate a panel that is going to audit the 2022 presidential election. Okay. Within six months upon adoption, the parliament shall enact a county review bill so that we look at the issue of county boundaries. Six months again on the issues of uh, electoral justice. But I want to say this brief briefly. This report has got what is called protection of consensus. In the view that the report is a culmination of substantive engagements and participation of the people. It means the people have given their views. And that's why in the protection of consensus clauses of the framework agreement, it says that once an issue has been canvassed through coalition party ranks and agreed, that issue shall be reinforced from amendment. Now, okay. the report did not come as a report as uh, Murugara once to put it. It came with nine legislative instruments, starting with on the issue of uh, IBC Amendment Act 2023, ESCC Amendment Act 2023. So they're not oh, eight, they're nine. They are nine. Okay. <clears throat> including the Constitutional Amendment Bill 2023 no. that they have no power to amend. Now, that tells you that the report is presented to Parliament. All right. The only thing that can happen is if they realize, for example, in the changes that are provided for in one of the bills, like uh, IEBC Amendment Bill 2023, uh, that proposes to amend some sections or the constitutional amendment bill that proposes to amend article 138 to provide for roles of the commissioners in verifying presidential results and it says 137 2 while it should be 137 and 3 those are issues that they can amend but the substantive issues of the bill that were presented by the people of Kenya, they cannot change it. Okay. However, uh -huh. the process requires that they facilitate as parliament public participation. So in that process, the people should know what is in the amendment bill of IEBC? What is in the amendment bill of the opposition, or bill or, or leader of official opposition, and so on and so forth? Mm -hmm. That process, we agree, must go on. But they cannot change the content, largely to deviate from the real idea. That okay. one cannot happen. Mm -hmm. So I can submit by saying, Hone mm -hmm. Murugara 
must stop holding brief if he's holding any. And if you recall, Raila Molodinga in his last media appearance, where I was there, and he said that there are certain forces within parliament and outside parliament that are hell-bent on derailing this process. President William Ruto, while receiving the reporter's status, did commit to the people of Kenya that he will do everything possible to ensure that the NADCO report is implemented. It is the duty of parliament today to implement that report pronto. I think as you come in, yeah. basic structure, mm -hmm. doctrine of the constitution, mm -hmm. referendum, is it inevitable? And, you know, do we find ourselves in a constitutional yeah. moment? You know, Frederick, Frederick was, I think, in the team that yeah. actually mm -hmm. helped craft the NADCO, uh, uh, you know, report and all that. And I think, I, I, and I think he's in, uh, conflicted <laughs> to some <laughs> level. <laughs> so he can be so passionate on about subject, it. Yes. On a more neutral uh, uh, approach, uh -huh. uh, Anything that touches on the structure of the Constitution, any mm. amendments that are proposed which would affect the structure of the Constitution, and that includes the structure of the government, mm. must face the referendum. There is so little we can do That's about true. that. And uh, in terms of whether uh, we are now okay and on the highway to change with the NADCO report, mm. there is a major problem uh, between Ruto's men and Raila's men in terms of those people who are against the NADCO itself they did not want national dialogue. They completely, you know, uh, were opposed to it. And you find that some of them are actually now being told to implement it. It's very complicated because what the, you know, you know, the Legal Affairs Committee is supposed to do basically is really to look at what has been presented to them and advise whether it is proper or improper legally, Correct. or it's legal or not legal, but not to create their own interviews and create their own, you know, uh, refining and trying to filter and then <coughs> give people a document that did not emanate from the national dialogue. So on that point, I think the chairman should be you know, informed and, and quickly avoid those legalese and try to show and try to flex muscles on the people of Kenya in terms of what you know about the law. Unfortunately, people can actually tame what you know and can actually ignore what you know sometimes because that is what people want. So yeah. the NADCO report should be implemented as, as soon as possible. Of course, they have been given 45 days. They should publish it and let the people decide. In a referendum or not in a referendum, of course, that you know that particular you know decision and comment can be can come forth from the the, 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 the legal committee. Yeah. But anything touching on changing the constitution, whether structure or government structure itself, must face the referendum. And I don't think we'll have so much option about it. We will go to the referendum in my opinion. Maybe just one thing before that, okay. so that I, 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 I enrich what uh, Wakila said. It is true. There are certain recommendations that touches on the provisions of 255, as you have said. Yeah. Functions of parliament, they are there. When you produce or you, 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 you recommend the leader of, uh, I mean, leader of opposition that at some point will appear in parliament, then again it must go to the people. When you establish office of the prime minister that coordinates national government offices, ministry, and give answers to, to member of parliament, again it affects the function of parliament. It will go to the referendum. And therefore, that is why in the report, as the new Lamoja One Kenya and Kenya Kwanza committee that formed NADCO recommends that at an agreed time, then the people will go for a referendum to make the final decision on those proposals as presented. Okay, Ruth, briefly. I, I think yeah. I want to look at, at it differently because the current matters have already been tabled. I want <coughs> to take you back to 2010, 2010 actually, during the, uh, the, the current uh, constitution that we, uh, the referendum or the, 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 uh, how we brought the constitution mm -hmm. came into being. Yeah. If you look at 10, 2010, actually, when the constitution came into to be, it was during the President Kibaki's regime. And during yeah. President Kibaki's regime, the reason, I, 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 the, one of the main reasons that we see that we can not ignore is some of the issues that happened in 2007, 2008. And at that point, Jesse, there needed to be a lot of dialogue, collaboration. In this country, even as we look at how the political divides are, there is no way that leadership can go on without collaboration in terms of ensuring that some of these roles that are being uh, proposed come into being. And the reason why I'm saying that is because whenever there is no collaboration in this country, even economically, where I'm coming from strongly, you, economically the country does very badly, actually. You, we, uh, uh, if we can, for example, even 
look at, for example, the other general election when uh, uh, Azimio uh, and Frederick is here. I don't know if he went to the road to, <laughs> to do some of these demonstrations, you know. Mm -hmm. And you could tell whether it was being seen as an, a minority, which is not, because it's a bigger minority. Uh, the economic of this country was at standstill. There are people actually who are really interested in, in terms of how they can turn around uh, the businesses and the economy of this country. And that cannot happen without some of these amendments that are being spoken about here today and especially in the amendment of the constitution. We are now 2024 is exactly 15 years later and I know there are some others that had been already brought in uh, the direction even where the president went to a no, uh, especially in the uh, because it was being viewed a lot as issues of worship and things like that. But in this perspective especially because of the uh, for example even the position of say the prime CS, the reason why it's being called the prime CS is because it wants to be seen as a bit elevated but the constitution does not clearly allow to have that function very elevated. But in the current political divide, especially even if we look at how people can vote differently, say today the mountain vote with Luo, there are still a bigger majority of the, of the Rift Valley. And with that in mind, and for the future of this country, okay. and to ensure there is cohesion, I think those amendments need to be done, and we'll see that maybe according to, uh, maybe in those 45 days we see the And, and in your view, as we finalize, are these yeah. amendments what really Kenyans, and I know he mentioned that the intricate process of uh, public participation and whatnot, but when the cost of living is not there, this might look as a political class report. If uh, I can put it that Unfortunately, yeah. I can say that unfortunately. They normally say if you want to hide mm -hmm. something uh, from an African, put it in a book. And the Constitution is one book. I remember when the Constitution came, it was taken everywhere. I'm sure no one knows where that book is right now for those who are given those Constitution books. But what I'm going to say, that the interest, um, the reason why you can see when the county governments are struggling today is because people are not keen in reading the things that guide them, you know, the policies, the rules, the rules of law. So that means we are being led, it's like a blind leading a blind, okay. because people are not really structured and committed to the rule of law. But at the end of the day, uh -huh. I think the, the other thing that the government or, or the leadership, because I'm saying leadership because it's both sides, the leadership has not done well in this country over the years in communication. Some of these major issues have not gone to the ground. People to be able to know what is going on. Jesse, on the issue of cost of living, because earlier around you asked that question, there are people who did not append their signatures. For example, one of our principal, Honorable Gino Madwa, yes. and he said that in his view, they would have done better by agreeing on the issue of cost of living. Remember when we were starting the talk, we agreed that in the report there shall be issues agreed upon and issues not agreed upon. Mm. But when you look at Article 43, cost of living and related matters, actually the committee tried, but it was not to the level that we expected as a Zimio okay. and the public. One of the issues was, we relook at the Financed Act 2023 True. that came with taxes that are punitive, heartless and reckless. We didn't do that. And as Zimio, proposed that do away with this housing levy because it is going to injure so many people. We proposed do away with anti-adulteration levy, do away with the road maintenance levy and all those taxes. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. the committee says in doing so, if we have agreed to disagree, let's look at how we are going to imply austerity measures for this government in the next three years. That will be the term of President Ruto. One, judiciary, executive and parliament. How do we cut down our travel expenditures by 50%. Cost of uh, supplies in the offices, mandazi, chair, and the rest, cut down by 30%. If All you are right. to travel, okay. do economy, okay. at least it is four hours travel. And all other issues <clears throat> of corruption and wastages that we're talking about, the report that came from the Auditor General and Control of Budget. Yeah, yeah. So, it is progressively being addressed. But as Azimio, they told us that they are the government of the day. They know what they're doing. They have a manifesto, bottom-up economic model. They are going to implement their manifesto. What we are asking them today, that has not happened. The people are still suffering. The Mamamboga, Mkokoteni, Boda Boda, they still feel that the cost of being so high. Right. We have said as a Zimio okay. that we will continue addressing those issues until such a time that Kenyans will feel that we are safer. Yes, sir. As you finalize, yes, to, yeah. to put this thing to rest mm. in terms of uh, cost of living and uh, 
you know, changing the constitution to accommodate uh, prime minister and official opposition. It looks petty when you are going into changing the constitution just to accommodate a larger government, but from experience and history, uh, let's put this in honesty. If William Ruto is sorted and Raila Odinga is sorted, actually, the cost of living will come down. So, yeah. so let's, <laughs> no, no, let, no, 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 let's try to understand our, our, our fate, I yeah. mean, our plight. Dynamics, sorry. yes. Let's understand our, our plight. If Raila Odinga is quiet, William Ruto will rule. If William Ruto is satisfied, Raila Odinga will go to the AU. Already, fuel is down by seven bob, just in the course of last week after <laughs> it was settled that, yes, we will support Raila Odinga. So, much as we have this academic and theoretical way of explaining life, yeah. okay. let's go down to practicality. All right. If this government is expanded to accommodate those who are, I am not after Prime Minister, surely. I am after, is Raila satisfied? Yes. Is my fuel down by 10 bob? Yes, I'm satisfied. So let's not mislead anybody because of the grouping in uh, Azimio and those who want to lead in uh, Kenya Kwanzaa. Let the president, let Raila Odinga, let those who are really clamoring for going into office, we can make them comfortable to allow us to breathe. But if we continue academically fighting and saying, no, it is not this one, it's not that one, we will continuously have life becoming very difficult for Kenyans. Let's fix that by going to the referendum or by agreeing on those changes in parliament so that everybody is accommodated. Interesting. Well, of course, wage bill and other issues come into the picture, but we'll definitely cross that bridge when we reach there. Interesting to note, will there be any political opposition to the referendum? If Azimio mm -hmm. is supporting, yeah? Mm -hmm. Kenya Kwanzaa, through the president, has said, I will support as much as possible. You, you, you see, Jesse. Uh, should, uh, should there uh, be uh, any opposition? Should, uh, <laughs> the, the question is, should there be should any? There, yeah. If the document is good and the people agree, okay. you give the people opportunity to say yes or no. However, listen, the issues that people want to see, they want to see the issues of concern to their daily life. Basic needs, water, food, security, school, all those things, if those are addressed. But remember, for those to be addressed, you must have leaders in place that are comfortable enough to address those issues. As it is today, the biggest issue is electoral justice and related matters. Right. We go into an election that is disputed every five years, and people steal election. Those who lose, they say it is stolen. Those who win, they say we won. But there are reasons as to why our elections are the way they are. We want to address that issue. And that's why in the committee report, it did not say just reconstitute IBC. Okay. The committee recommends that reconstitute and restructure. Then other related matters is reforms. Mm. 18 months before election, let's amend all the laws that we want. Don't amend them two months, three months as we did the other time. And then you go into an election that you don't know. Commissioners don't know their role. ROs don't know their role. We will be running into the same trap of 2022 2007, 2017, we want to have an IBC in place that is acceptable largely by politicians and more so by the people of Kenya. Right. Believable. Okay, okay. Well, let's take a short break on that particular note. You're watching Inside Politics. We'll be back with much more on the roundtable conversation right here. Shifting focus to, as Stop put it, Baba in Addis Ababa. Stay with us.